So in order for her to get that peace, we had to move away. We had to get away from what we knew. And I feel like that honestly saved us. Because had I stayed in in Alabama, nothing against anybody that lives in Alabama. I love the South. I love I anybody asked me where I'm from, I'm from Alabama, Roll Tide. All of that. That is me. I'm in Britted, Alabama. But I feel like her moving us out of Alabama to Indiana saved our lives. Um, it helped us to have a different outlook on life and to see hope and possibility. I feel like um, us being pulled away from what we knew there, the poverty, the um, inability to live and the, not so much live, but the inability to um, grow or to see beyond our um, poor lives or our lives where we didn't have the things in life that we thought or that we should have. Um, moving us helped to helped us to see that. So when we moved, my we were with my grandma for a little bit, and then mom got we got our own place, and mom went to work. That was the difference that I saw in it. Like I know my mom did work right before prior to me being ten years old because I knew she um, was a uh, not a nurse but like a CNA or something along them lines because she had went to school and got her certifications and all of that, and she was working in that field. Um, when we were younger, um, I remember a glimpse of that, but not completely like my siblings do. Um, but I remember a glimpse of that where mom was working. But when we got, when, when we were living where we were living when I was 10 and could remember vividly, I don't, didn't recall her working um, much at all, um, which made it challenging for us. Um, but when she got to Indiana, she worked for, wow, I want to say until we graduate, I graduated. I know she was still working. Yeah, and then she, she stopped again. Um, she, she moved back to Alabama with her then husband, which is now my stepdad now, and they've been married, thank God. They've been married um, going on 20 years now. So, and it's a blessing that she has someone that loves her because she's seeked and longed for that for so long. And she just went through all the motions of different men that just, they 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 didn't love her. Um, and I know that's what she was seeking because I dealt with that same feeling as well as I was going through life trying to figure out like, how do I find love? And why don't they love me like I love them mentality? And um, so I understand why she was going well i understand what she went through um with all of the transition and the marriages and um the relationships that she had i thought that well if my kids never see me in the relationships that i'm in they don't know that i'm going through the same thing that my mom went through or that nana went through um so but i was lying to myself because i was doing the same thing creating that same cycle but i think what helped or what's helping my girls and my children is well yeah, is that they didn't get to see as much as I did. The exposure that I prevented as best I could, they didn't get to see. It's like some, they knew of some things that went on in my world because I allowed that to be. Um, and then they're smart kids. They're not, you know, kid, we, we think kids don't know what's going on around us, but they do. Um, but they... They they got they they were sheltered from some of the things that I wasn't sheltered from and that I got that I was a privy to and got a chance that I was a part of and saw that was very traumatic watching and seeing so um, but yeah my mom moved back to Alabama she worked for a little bit and then my, her husband told her she didn't have to work no more and that was the best thing for her in her mind that hey someone will now take care of me and I don't have to work so hard and take care of everybody else which I was glad and grateful for to have that opportunity um, to be able to be a wife um, and not have to worry about how the bills are going to get paid and how she was going to do A, B, C, D. Um, but prior to that, we went through, you know, a lot of different situations. So when we moved to Indiana, we, um, I got, I was in, we were in, I was in high school. Um, actually, three of us were in high school and the other one was grown. Well, let me see, 14. 
15. Yeah. So three of us were in high school. The other was grown. But they actually, the, the third one, he um, got his, his um, certifications and stuff through Job Corps. So we were, two of us were in high school in Indiana um, at the time. And, you know, it was a lot of, it was a culture shock because we were used to being around a lot of people that looked like us. And we ended up being exposed to people that look like everybody in the world um, from friends we had from teachers from because um the area we lived in they bust us out to another school and it was um it wasn't culturally diverse because there was only a few people that looked like me there but there were other people from other nationalities but majority um caucasians were there but being exposed to that not saying that they have a better life Please, people don't take it this way. Um, but everybody gonna do what they gonna do with what I give them. So it is what it is. But um, it we got access to things that we wouldn't have had access to, and um, because of the current trajectory we were heading in, and it gave us access to different things that helped us to have a different outlook on life. But I still felt like I was missing something, and I just didn't feel completely loved. I didn't feel valued. Um, so I was still looking for that. And because I was looking for that, I went out into the world and did things that I shouldn't have done and lived a life that, you know, God was probably wasn't pleased of, but he already knew what I was going to do before I did it. Um, so, um, the, the, I just went through life doing the things that I thought were the right things to do, but they weren't. Ended up having my, getting pregnant with my son at the age of 17. Um, I did graduate high school. And I had my son, and a few months later, I turned 18, um, graduated from high school. And there was a lot of things within that little window that made me really second-guess people that I had in my life. So at this point, now 18 years old, so we went from 10 to 18. At 18 years old, I'm questioning my circle. I'm questioning the people that are around me and uh, truly wondering if they're really there for me there was one person that i knew was always there for me um and i even questioned whether god was still there for me but my big brother was always there for me he was he was my ride or die he was always my ride or die you know as we grow and we move into our own areas of life we do have different um ways of living and um but we still are there for each other no matter at the end of the day you know i'm there for him he's there for me type of thing and we try to make sure we keep that relationship strong we love our other siblings but i just had a closer bond with my older brother um but back it back up a little bit so at this point i'm 18 years old and questioning my circle trying to figure out and understand like the people around me like are they really here for me or are they they out to get me and 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 um, cause harm. This around this time also, um, my brother had um, changed. He went through an episode of psychosis um, at school, and he has not been the same since. And we've um, tried to help him in the best way we can to live a life of normalcy, but he's chosen his normalcy. So we allow him to do his normalcy, but that affected me. Um, family members that would come around would um, say things that was just not um, for me. Like they would say things about certain things that I was in, but that were not for me. And I would brush it off. But still to this day, those words still sit in me and they, they've affected me. Um, and then the way my mom reacted when I got pregnant, it affected me. It tore me down and it, um, it, uh, I try to tell the story, y'all, without getting sad and emotional, but, you know, I've been through a lot in life, but I'm also um, a work in progress, and I'm healing through the trauma. Um, but the things that my mom did, like I said, she, um, she reacted very, very bad to it. She slapped me, and um, it was hard, because I, I remember bleeding when she hit me, um, because she was angry that... I had did what she did and she was disappointed but that was her way of showing her anger and disappointment and uh, that affected me for a while because I was one of those kids that didn't get in trouble I stayed out of everybody's way and to but to be that kid that she once bragged about sorry 
to now be the dis the disappointment. Sorry. To be that kid that she once was bragging about um, because I was doing so well and everything. My grades were great. I was a good kid. I stayed out of trouble. Um, I was I was kind. I, you know, I was just I was trying my best to be the perfect kid for her. But I was tearing. I was dying on the inside because I was missing pieces that I needed. Sorry. So to go from being that perfect kid or that that person she was bragging about all the time to now being her pregnant teenage daughter, she hasn't really um, really given me much in. Um, uh, what's the word? Oh, gosh, just any acknowledgement of how proud she is of anything that I've done since then. Um, she'll say, my daughter's this, my daughter's that, but it's been a while since I really felt that my mom has really, really acknowledged anything that I've done in my life. That means a lot to me, but to me, to her, it doesn't say she's not told me she's proud of me in a very, very long time. And I know that I'm doing pretty well in life and I'm successful. I literally went from a teenage mom to a master's, master's degree scholar in education. Um, I've got a bachelor's degree in um, business and then a associate's degree in, in paralegal studies. And I'll tell you all about that another time. Um, I've been married to my husband for eight years now I've been together 10 and um, I've raised three of my own and one other because the other one was grown so was, we have five kids all together but I've raised a uh, total of four kids and um, they're doing very well in life and still to this day my mom my mom talks about other people and how well they're doing in life and she the recognition, that was the word I was looking for. I don't get it from her, right? It still hurts because, you know, you long for that from your parent because you, you don't get it from, you know, if you can't get it from them, then who do you get it from? So I, as I grow and I transform, I'm trying not to cry all the way out, y'all, because I ugly cry when I cry. And I don't want to ugly cry, y'all. Don't want to, y'all can't see me ugly cry. I can't do it. But... And breathe because whew. Whew. okay I'm good I'm good but when you can't get it from your parents it's like you're you for me I that was my focus is to show her that yes mom I became a teen mom but watch what I do. Watch what I can still do. Look, watch. It's like when you those little kids and you're playing around. Like, look, mom, look at me. Look at me. And I've been screaming, look at me for so long. But she never looks at me like that. She loves me. I know she does. But I had to come to the understanding that she was angry with me. And she holds that like she's held a lot of other stuff in her world. Um... She holds that against us, and she, she takes that with her, and it causes her not to have such a happy life. Um, she, um, I, I had to come to the understanding that her things that she's a part of and her addictions have caused her and her mental illness has caused her to not be as, not be as connected with the world and reality around it. She's a very smart person. Not even gonna act like she doesn't get stuff or anything like that, but um, because of the things around her and the things that have happened in her life, she's instead of allowing herself to grow and heal from them, she's held them in and harbored them, and they cause her to spiral into um, darkness. And my focus is to be light for her, as much light as I can be, even if she never ever tells me that she's proud of me ever again. I know that at one point in my life, she was proud of me. I know that she loves me and I know that it's not completely her that doesn't really see me. So, um, 
neat back to there. So I got my mom showed me her disappointment and all of that. I mean, literally, I'm 18 with my son. It's like March. So let's see, September, October, November, December, January, February, March. Seven month old son. Um, had no thought that I had to get out. But mom went on a cruise one weekend and told me when she, when I when she got back I need to be gone. So um, and see that still that stuff sticks with you, you know. And and you try to heal from it, but a lot of times it's not that easy. But she told me I need to be gone when she got back from her cruise. She was going on a cruise for a job, mind you. She's still working. Um, so yeah, she was still working for a little bit even after I graduated. So, but she's still working. So she goes on a cruise for for a job and. I, I, I pack up all my stuff and I go and I go stay with a friend because I'm not working just yet um, because mom said I didn't have to yet you know just raise my kid for right now and then um, go from there um, sorry my nose is itching y'all try not to dig in it per se um, but hold on one second okay I'm back so Mom puts me out or tells me to get out. So I literally have a like a weekend because I don't think they were gone for a long weekend to figure out where to go. So at this point, I'm staying with a friend until I can find my own place. So I take, she tells me that everything in my room is mine. I can have that. Um, so I have, I take literally my bedroom suit and TV and I go. Then she comes home and she's looking for me and she finds me or someone tells her I'm at my friends or whatever. I don't even remember how she found where I was. At this point, I'm angry because you you flipped on me. I'm angry, and I, you know I don't want to be found, so I'm not going to say where I am. But someone told her where I was, and she comes and she does something that makes matters even worse. So the stuff that she gave me, and she told me it was mine. She came and she took the TV back. She said, this is my TV. You can't have it. I didn't say you can have that. And I was like, well, you said everything in my room was mine. But, um, yeah, turns out that wasn't it. So, um, fast forward a little bit. After I get through the pain of that, I do get the job. I start working at the bank and did banking for, like, um, off and on for about 10, 12 years. Um, but did banking and ended up finding a place for me and my son because at the time I just had him. And we were in our apartment, and we had our bed, well, my bed, and he had, did he have a crib at this point? He had a crib, so I had my bed, his crib, and my bedroom suit, his bed, and uh, maybe a TV or something like that. So we started from nothing. Um, I've, I think I found some furniture either at a yard sale or, uh, or Goodwill maybe months down the way when I started making some money at the bank. But I had to give put him in daycare. Um, I couldn't take him into a traditional daycare. So he was, I'm one of my friends that I used to work with. Mom watched him for a while. And, you know, that wasn't the best conditions for him either. But at this point, I was doing what I had to do to raise my son and um, figure things out. So I went through year, uh, years of being a single mom because um, the men that I decided to date reflected the same men that my mom chose to date. They weren't there as support systems to help with raising my son or being there. They were just there to get what they wanted from me, and they got it. Um, so I'll stop there as far as my story, and we'll pick that back up because later on in, in my book, it talks a little bit more about the different things that I've experienced in life and those pieces will come together. So um, I'll stop at being a single mom for right now. But I shared all that not to bash my mama because I love her and not to place blame on anybody, but to help people to see that you, your childhood may have been like mine, may have been, um, better than mine may have been worse than mine i don't know but i share that to say those who who've had rough childhoods that you don't have to stay stuck in the trauma of the past you can be able to grow and heal from that but in order to do that you've got to talk with somebody you've got to release that so i did counseling i did my first set of counseling in 2018 um, so here I am all these years in and finally decide to do counseling because the stigma of counseling in my mind had been broken. 
Um, and I was like, I'm not going to worry about what everybody else has to say about me going to get counseling, but I'm going to go get it because I need it. I need to talk to somebody so I can begin my healing process. Um, so during my healing process, um, I just started to really think about the different things going on, but um, I'll take it back just a little bit and help you guys see where and why I chose to get counseling um, because I dealt with for, I know, four more years, four years before I actually got counseling, I had dealt with a lot of different things, dealt with a lot of grief. So um, I think the second chapter of my book talks about grief. Yeah. Talks about grief. So I was dealing with the grief of my mom. She's not dead. Her health is failing now. We're working towards, you know, and praying that she'll have recovery and be able to come back and be, you know, live and vibrant. But if that's not the plan that God has, then um, we have to find a way to be okay with that and allow, um, and have to be okay with that and just understand God's plan. But she was literally living on this earth, but she was pretty much dead, but still alive, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna read a poem I wrote because I was missing her love and I needed it. And I still need my mom's love, but I don't have it. So dead, but still alive. Where are you? Can you see me? Do you know that you're dead, but still alive? Your body still walks this earth, but you are no longer here. You are so far away from everyone and everything around you. How did you get here? Why did you have to lose? Hmm. Why did we have to lose you too? It hurts daily to see your face and know that you're not in the vessel that walks this earth. I pray that one day you will be able to be alive in here emotionally. I'm gonna say that one again. I pray that one day you will be able to be alive in here emotionally and mentally again. I miss you so much. I long to be loved by you unconditionally. I long to be, well, apparently I needed to say it again, loved by you unconditionally. I don't want you to love me for all the wrong things, but love me because you want to, because I'm your daughter, because I'm your flesh and blood, because that's what moms do. Because without you, there be no me. Mommy, I love you and I miss you so much. I wish you weren't emotionally dead, but still alive. I pray that one day the, the whole you will be alive and well again. So, I wrote this poem in this book around this time to publish it in 2019. Um, after the loss of some key people in my life. Um, my grandmother passed away in 2014 and she was a mom figure for me when my mom couldn't be. Um, and that was more often than not. She really imparted in me a lot of wisdom, um, a lot of things that I take with me and helps and help me to shape and become the woman that I'm becoming. My son even said it one time. He's like, mom, you living in mind of grandma, um, you know, in the things that you do and how you carry yourself. And I really took pride in that because I really, really looked up to my grandma. I looked up to my mom as well um, until I started really seeing the change in her. I didn't stop looking up to her. I just... Um, my hero changed but i looked up to my grandma and i looked to her for wisdom we would have talks and we would just sit and just enjoy each other's company and um she passed away in 2014 but prior to her passing away my father passed away so 2014 was a rough year my father passed away in february my uncle passed away in i want to say september and then my grandma passed away in October. So my father, my uncle, who was around when my dad wasn't around, and my grandmother all passed away 
in a matter of months. So February, March, April, May, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, seven months later, and then eight months later, or a month after that, my grandmother. So here I am dealing with emotional, emotional things, um, just wrapping my mind around it. So my father wasn't in the home when we were growing up. I didn't really build a relationship with him until I was in my 20s um, when I created my own relationship because I was told by my mom most of my life that my father didn't want me. It was told to me that he didn't think I was his because my skin was like, my brothers are chocolate kids. Um, and because I came out light or brown and they were, well, I came out light brown, they were dark brown, my father questioned my mom, so my mom said, whether or not I was his or not. So when I got in my late 20s, I want to say 26, 27, I reached out to my father because I, I needed to, I needed closure. I needed to understand why I wasn't accepted like the boys were. Like, you don't like girls, daddy? Uh, or what? I didn't understand what it was. Kind of found out I had a sister, another sister, and I'll tell you about that later. But, um, I didn't understand what that was like why why would you not want me because I don't look like everybody else like I look just like you do but my skin is just lighter yes my mom and my dad both are chocolate people so I can understand why he would say that so I started to place blame on it like well maybe or you know no not place blame but accept it well maybe I get it you know I don't look like him but then I had to come to realization but I'm your daughter like my mama and you made me together because I look just like both of y'all. So, but um, we had that conversation and we started to build a relationship. Um, at first it was a usury relationship. He would call me when he needed me to get him rental cars and things like that because, you know, here I am rebuilding my life and trying to create, you know, good credit and things like that and establishing myself, making sure I keep my um, driving record good, all these different things. So he knew that I was in a good place, so it turned into usury until I stopped doing that, and then we started to continue to build on just having a relationship with each other. So we celebrated his um, 50th birthday. Was it 50, 40, one of his birthdays. I wanna say it was 50th, but it may have been 49, because no, he would have been 52 that year. Yeah, so we celebrated his 50th birthday together, and we had a good time but after that our relationship became distant because I was in an abusive relationship and I was trying to break away from the abusive relationship but my father had became like really close to my ex and because of that it um, put a strain on he and I's relationship so we moved away I moved um, to Indiana back to Indiana mind you I had moved back to Alabama was with my ex-husband and child and uh, children and then I moved back to Indiana and I cut all ties with everything and everyone in Alabama because no one understood what I was going through while I was there and I didn't want any I didn't want any memory of it I was literally dying um, I, I nearly lost my life several times dealing with uh, my ex and um, it was hard so because of that I cut ties but when I got a call in February of 2014 that my father had died it felt like someone had ripped my soul out of my body and I was mad with myself for a while.